Welcome back everyone to the Tiny Book Fair. So thrilled that you are all here. Um, if you missed our last session, it will be recorded. It was with Peachy Wimbush Polk and she is incredible and really started our day off so beautifully. Uh, and I, her, she did a card reading and the last one was be your effing self. Um, <laughs> And that is the energy that we are bringing into today is be yourself, um, you know, and, and, and show up in the world as your true authentic self. And I think that was such a beautiful way to start today. Um, one housekeeping thing, if you are just joining in the, for the first time, you can come and go as you please. Everything will be recorded. You can check out tinybookfair.com backslash live. We also have over... I think it's actually 50 uh, authors that are reading their books live. So you can check out, there's something for everyone. You can check out their readings, check out their books. We partnered with bookshop.org uh, that supports independent booksellers. And um, so you can purchase their books. Please check all of that out. Also on the shop page, <laughs> there also is freebies. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can download, if you remember from the Scholastic Book Fair, the posters that you would get, like dog posters and inspirational posters. So we made free dog posters and we made them so that they can be also as the background of your phone screen. They're the same size. So you can put a phone screen, you can download and print them. You can put them on the desktop of the background of your desktop. We really thought of it all. <laughs> um, so... So yeah, so those are just a couple housekeeping things. And now I'm so excited to introduce Heidi Rose Robbins. And like true Lindsay Smith style in the last session, I told, uh, if you weren't there, I when I introduced Peachy, I said that I met Peachy at a book event. And at the book event, I, I had this card deck idea for uh, several months and when I met Peachy for the first time, I was like, hey, I know this sounds weird, but like I had this card deck idea and meeting you, like you're the perfect person to write it. <laughs> and that's the embrace your power and magic card deck. That is how that happened. And like in true Lindsay form, Heidi and I met at Alex uh, Franzen's birthday party. We went to a birthday party a couple years ago, two years ago, I believe, um, in LA and Heidi, and I sat by each other and Heidi's like, yeah, I have this idea of these love letter books, like these tiny books. Um, you know, maybe I'll take the course or like we can, you know, like if you're interested in talking about it. And I was like, oh my goodness, I love this idea. And then I think I emailed you like literally the next week and said, hey, do you want to do these books? Like, do you want to write them? I'll put them out with my press, One Idea Press. And you said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now um, we have these beautiful love letter books, this series of 12 books, which has been so fun. And, you know, people are really just resonating with them. So like true Lindsay fashion, I guess my thing is, you know, believing in your book idea and making it happen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, without further ado, Heidi, you're an astrologer, an author, just an amazing creative and we're so excited um, that you're bringing your energy with us today and sharing all about the love letters and creativity and how it relates to our signs. So thank you and welcome. I will let you take it away. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. I'm, I just really wanna thank Alexandra and I wanna thank Lindsay and I wanna thank Jasmine and Peachy and Kaylee for being here today with me as well. I'm, I'm grateful to Lindsay and Alexander for a myriad of reasons, and you'll hear about some of them as I talk to you about um, how these books came to be. Um, so today I have a couple of plans, and by the way, please throughout, if you want to share in the chat, I'm always looking over and I'm happy to integrate whatever you uh, offer up. But um, today I want to read you a poem. And I want to tell you how these 12 little astrology books came to be, these zodiac love letters. And I want to give you some delicious invitations about cultivating creativity in each astrological sign. So you get a little taste of your sun sign, maybe your rising sign if you know it, maybe your moon sign if you know it. So we'll talk about that. 
So as, as Lindsay said, I am an astrologer. I've been an astrologer for over 20 years. I grew up in a house of astrology, so I'm sort of bilingual. Um, I'm also a poet, and I have been writing poetry since I was a kid. And I've self-published a couple of poetry books. And of course, as Lindsay said, recently through One Idea Press, we published the 12 Little Zodiac Love Letters. So I like to call myself a poet with the map of the heavens in my pocket. <laughs> And that little phrase actually um, takes me back to the story that I want to tell you and the poem that I want to read. So the poem that I'd like to share with you is a recent poem of mine. And um, I was in Ojai and I was writing, I was working on another book <laughs> as, as I want to do when I was working on poetry. And um, I was in a very beautiful place. It was a very beautiful day. And I I lay down on the on the deck of this balcony and I was listening to the trees and I was listening to the breeze and I was feeling very calm, which is rare for me. <laughs> and I was thinking about, you know, how I always have such a sense of urgency about getting things done. Oh, this has to be done. Why isn't it done yet? I'm, I'm a true to form sort of impatient Aries. And um, I think sometimes when we have these conversations about like, well, how did this book come to be? Or how did you do what you're doing? We have an inner sense of like, oh, I'm, I'm behind, not enough, not enough. And I, I think that Alexandra has a big sort of theme in her life about doing things with grace and doing things with ease and getting it done, you know, Lindsay and Alexandra getting it done, but not at the cost of, you know, our lives, right? So this poem, um, in fact, there's a, there's a beautiful quote that I love from the Agni Yoga books, and it, it just says, make haste slowly, which I just adore because yes, we have things to do, but you don't have to overwhelm your system. Yeah, and you don't have to over effort. So I wrote this poem that I wanna share with you as a way for us to begin in a kind of grace and ease. And it's called Slower Still. Slower Still. In this mad rush world, we are gifted two words, two little words. I will whisper them to you. Slower still. Slower still, my loves. The sun wants to linger on our skin. Our bodies want rest. Our breath, slower still. Our heartbeat, slower still. Let us lie down upon the earth. The whole of the beautiful world has something to say, but certain languages are only heard here. Slower still. The trees know when we have fully surrendered, only then will they converse. Slower still, my loves. The press of time holds no sway here. Let time pass. It will pass. It passes. But this cradled nowness lives. So slower still and all, you'll still get all the things done you need to get done, you know? Um, a breath, a resetting. I have to do this several times every day, right? Just a resetting and a remembrance and uh, a, a backing off of the impatience and the urgency and the feeling behind, yeah? So, so let's get back to 2013, okay? My friend Ellen Fondler, who I, I do a wonderful podcast with called Chart Your Career. We combine uh, astrology and um, career advice. Um, she's a love and has been in my life for a long time. Well, she invited me to a workshop in the Pacific Palisades, and it was Alexandra Franzen's workshop. And, and she raved about her. And I didn't know Alexandra at the time, but I always, always trust Ellen. <laughs> and it was a weekend workshop, and people were flying in from all over the country and probably the world. <clears throat> and we even got a speeding ticket on the way because we were so excited. So we got there and Alex, as ever, asked great questions and we kind of wrote like wild things. I still have the, the, the book that I bought and it's full. I can't believe how much I wrote that weekend. 
We wrote two minute poems. We answered all kinds of questions about our career. We, what else did we do? We, in the end, we had a little presentation that was a performative gift that we gave one another. And we each had to write our own introduction. And that is where I wrote a poet with the map of the heavens in my pocket. And that is, was an important moment for me because I had been doing my astrology, but I also really wanted to come forward with my more poetic artist self. And I wanted to start to blend these two. And these little books that I'm gonna talk about are absolutely a blend of those two parts of me. And I needed to name the poet part and I needed to come forth with it at that moment in the, in the strongest way and then be informed by the magic and the dance of the heavens. So that's where that phrase came to be. And that phrase has lived with me and in me since then. So I'm deep, deeply, deeply grateful for that weekend. So now, cut to a massage table, okay? <laughs> Unexpected, but there it is. So I'm lucky to have this amazing, amazing masseuse. And she has magic hands, and I was on her table, and uh, you know, occasionally I treat myself to this, right? And I was daydreaming. And suddenly, and really like, I was just struck with this idea, and I couldn't let go. And I just, for the entire hour, I was just buzzing. I was buzzing. And in fact, at the end, she even said something about your head was just like on fire. <laughs> So I spent the entire hour working out the idea. And when I got off the table, I said, Rebecca, you have just inspired my next creative project. And I sort of zoomed out of there and I was so, I was so excited. And, I, and it was at that moment that I knew that I was going to write the series of the Zodiac Love Letters. Now, look, as is often the case, I, th this theme had been brewing in my life for some time and it had been showing up in many different ways. So for example, I had recorded one minute audios for each sign of the Zodiac on Instagram and just, they were a love letter. And I just uh, said, you know, I love you to each sign of the Zodiac. I had written a series about why it's great to have a friend uh, in each sign of the Zodiac. I had, and I had been teaching for 20 years about using really encouragement and love and offering the best of each sign. So this is a culmination of years of work that finally had this little like yes to it, that finally had the form. So, you know, trust that as you're going, you're building up you're, you're taking all the pieces that you're gonna synthesize. And this was a moment of synthesis. Now, that could have died on the vine, right? Because sometimes we have these aha moments and we're like, okay, this is, you know, this is a great idea and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it and then time passes. And then we start to beat ourselves up because we don't act on it, right? And I mean, in this case though, and I've had plenty of ideas like that, I will tell you, but in this case, I was too fired up about the idea. And I, immediately, almost immediately, sometime, I think within the next month, I took myself to Ojai for the weekend. And what I, it was with the sole intent of creating a prototype. And I, I had already written down a lot of ideas, but I also had ideas about what I wanted them to look like and feel like. And so I, I went to Ojai and I, you know, at first I napped heavily and drank coffee and took long walks and cried, but then I started working on my book um, and it, it was a little, I brought, I brought with me materials. I brought um, uh, some beautiful markers. I brought little red books because red is the sign of Aries. I brought glue sticks and then I made a prototype which looked a little like this. So I, oop, let me do it like this, yeah. So every page, you know, had a little offering and I'm going to tell you how the book is divided. Um, but I put it all together and it, and it made me so, so, so happy. And it's kind of very makeshift. I had to glue two little books together, <laughs> but um, it was, it was like, ah, I felt like, ah, this is what I want to do for every sign of the Zodiac. And you know what? I was determined, even if they didn't get published, I was going to make every single one of them. And if I had to, I was going to take them to Kinko's and, you know, whatever I needed to do, I was going to get them out into the world. And, you know, self-publishing is easier these days too, right? So I was determined. So I took that little book and I took it home and I put it on my bedside table which is my slash altar. <laughs> and I put it on my bedside table and 
I took this little red robin. See this little sweet guy? <laughs> Look at him. I took this little red robin and I put it on the book because this little red robin my kids gave me after we went on this beautiful trip to Ireland. And I stuck it on the book because this robin represents to me springtime, possibility, the love of my children, magic can happen. And I plunked it on the book so it looked like this, do you know? There we go. And I kept it there. And I said, this is, I'm going to trust timing now and I'm going to trust right relationships. Okay. So then I had the opportunity to talk. This was a very blessed opportunity to talk with a publishing company sort of through a six degrees of separation. And I said, Hey, I have this idea for these little books and, um, I, I feel excited about them and it's a great idea and nobody's quite done it this way. And they said, do you have an idea for one book? Because nobody's going to invest in 12. <laughs> 12 is crazy. And I was like, are you sure it's crazy? Because th these are the great reasons why you'd want to do it. And they said, we're interested in one book. Can you pitch that? And so I said, yeah, I'll pitch one idea. But quietly in my heart, I said, these books will come to form in another way. I just was like, this is my passion. This is my passion project. Like I want to do these books. So I talked with these little books. We talked about these books with friends and with colleagues and with at parties and with my students. And I talked about them because I was passionate about them. And my idea was always that people would purchase their sun, moon and rising sign book or they'd purchase the whole pack and like everybody knows someone of every sign. So, you know, you take it out and you learn about this person and you don't just learn about this person. You love the person because their books are love letters. And my idea was that we would, we would give these love letters to ourselves or we'd give the love letters to another. And, you know, since we published them, um, at holiday season last year, that's what's been happening. People are just giving them as gifts and love letters. And they're like, you know, I'm getting notes that say, oh, it's my favorite birthday gift to give now because it's, it's not just Aries are da, 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 da. Taurus are da, da, da. It's like, no, I love you, Taurus. I love you, Aries. <laughs> right. Okay. So we're almost done with the story, but cut to another gathering with Alexander Franzen and Lindsay was just talking about this gathering and I'm talking with a group of people. I don't know anybody there. Again, I went with my dear friend, Ellen Fondler and there's Lindsay and all I know is that Lindsay and Alex do the tiny book fair together, or not tiny book fair, but tiny book classes. I don't even know that Lindsay is a publisher, honest to God, I don't know. And I'm starting to talk about just what I, why I love astrology and, you know, and Lindsay's lovely and warm and I start looking up their charts on the phone and I also say, Lindsay tells me the story, which she brought up at the beginning of the fair today. She tells me the story about how she was given a little book um, when she was a kid that was for the sign cancer and it said cancer on it. And I hope Lindsay, it's okay for me to tell this story, but um, it said cancer on it. And she apparently burst into tears because she thought her parents were telling her that she had cancer. <laughs> so we were just laughing and crying at the same time because here she was, you know, given this book that, that she loved, but she thought, oh my God, this is terrible. Um, so we, we were, you know, we were laughing about that together, but, but she told me that story after I told her about the little books. And so, um, I was happy to meet her. We exchanged information. I was proud of myself to just be like, I, you know, I'm just here at a party talking with a bunch of strangers about what I love. Right. Um, and then just like a week later, Lindsay reached out and she said, should we do these? And I said, yes, please. And we busted them out in nine months and it was a crazy nine months. Um, and, and I know that Lindsay and Alexander are going to give a, a little workshop at the end of today about how to write a book when you don't have time. Well, that was my life. Um, but I was like, I love it. I want to do these things. And so we did and we, and, and they look and they feel just like I hope they would. And I'm going to show you for a moment. Look, they're pretty, right? <laughs> 12 little books. Um, so I want to I tell you all this story. I'll tell you all this story just because you all, every one of you, I'm sure, have your own form of dream, your own passion. And there is something magic about how things can unfold. And all we have to do is we just have to keep saying yes. And we need to hold the vision and we need to invite our allies, right? 
We need to invite our allies and we need to say, I don't know where my allies are going to appear from, what you, but, but I'm going to call to them, right? That's a very Aquarian thing to call to your allies. So these are my three little uh, sun, moon and rising books. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the sun, moon and rising in a second, but um, I'm a, basically, I'm an Aries sun, Leo rising, Capricorn moon. And the books are divided into four different sections and each section has an invitation in it. So for example, if I'm going to look at the Leo book, the first section is just called celebrating your Leo love. Okay. So the first section is just me loving you as a Leo. So if I'm going to open up the page, I'm, I, I'm just randomly opening. I swear <laughs> we'll, we'll just see what shows up. But this one says your heart is like the sun. Dear Leo, you are a great light. You shine and warm all those you meet. People grow in the warmth of your love. When you walk into a room, you bring vitality and light. Your energy touches all those in your midst. So every page has a little thing like this. And what I imagine is that it sits right at your bedside table and you wake up in the morning and you read a little bit about, you know, how wonderful you are. Now, the second section is called living your Aries love. So that's where I suggest, you know, here are all these wonderful qualities. Why don't you, here's, here's some things you could do with them. So um, I just opened again to the section of living your uh, Leo love. And it says, help another shine. Mentor a young artist. Encourage another to believe in herself again. Encourage a friend. Suggest a class, offer your wisdom, offer inspiring words, remind those in your care who they truly are, right? That's a way to live your Aries love, to give the gift of you, okay? And then there's a section called growing your Leo love. And that section has to do with like, yes, you're beautiful and there are always ways that we can grow in consciousness, right? And and we can grow in love and we can use our gifts. We can bust through any obstruction. So here's a funny one um, that I opened to. It's called Share the Limelight. So it says, oh dear Leo, you love a good spotlight and you deserve it, but invite others to share the bounty, acknowledge and fully celebrate the gifts of others. So it's just a slight corrective, right? If we're, if an Aries person is impatient, it's a slight corrective. It's, if a Leo person is, loves to shine forth the self it's like and then sh then hand the light off to the next you know so it's um it's opportunities to grow and then the very last section is all about just writing prompts to help us to help us discover who we truly are and so for example you know one of the writing prompts for leo just might be i feel courageous when i fill in the blank right so it's a, it's a workbook. I mean, I don't want you to write in it, but it's a workbook. It's, um, it's a love letter. It's a gentle mentor whispering. Like these are the ways that maybe you can keep growing and not just rest on the bounty and beauty of you, but like <laughs> keep growing. So this is how the books are divided. Now, I don't know how many of you know your sun, moon, and rising sign, but it's never enough to know just your sun sign. You, you definitely want to know your sun, moon, and rising sign. And here's why. In the astrology I practice, which is soul-centered astrology, the rising sign is the sign that was rising the moment that you were born. It's the moment you took your first breath, there's that sign coming over the horizon line. And that is the sign that's actually rising in you. And by that, I mean, this is the energy we want to cultivate in our lifetime. This is the energy that we want to stand in. Sometimes I say to my clients, listen, pretend like you're, I mean, you're, you're a, take the Leo rising and make it your sun sign. Like I'm a Leo, I'm a Virgo, I'm a Taurus and try it on because uh, it is the energy you're apprenticing to. So the rising sign is enormously important. It's also called the ascendant. The sun sign is the doing self in the world, right? It's like, this is just, it's how you sh shine forth. It's like what you will most probably manifest in your life. And a lot of times we see our career through the sun sign. We see what we're doing in the world tangibly through the sun sign. Um, 
And that is the, it, the, the sun sign is called the sun of probability and the rising sign is called the sun of possibility because we only might be able to share the best of the rising sign. Now, the rising sign can also indicate just like how we walk in a room and how people see us and even what we look like. But the, the best of the rising sign kicks in when you are interested in helping another. And not everyone is, right? But the moment inside us when we're like, I am ready to um, give a gift to humanity or to others or to my community, that's when the, the best of the rising sign kicks in, when we're like, this is what I'm here to do. Now the moon, just to weave in the moon here too, the moon has to do with our childhood and it has to do with our past and it has to do with our emotional go-to and it has to do with certain patterns of behavior that, we, um, that, we, that are get ingrained in us in childhood. And some of that we want to leave behind some of that no longer serves us. And some of that we want to carry forward in a beautiful way and we want to offer our gift, right? So it's, uh, my dad is an astrologer as well and I remember him giving me this image. He said like, you're born into the moon, that's your childhood, that's your little home nourishment or you know, not always nourishing. You get into your sun car, so you're driving away from your childhood and you're going towards the horizon, which is your rising sign. So you can see why it would be important to know all three, because it gives you a, a sense of the past, it gives you a sense of what you, your tools, and it gives you a sense of what you want to bring forth, yeah? I'm so glad I'm noticing that so many of you do know your sun and, and moon and rising, that's wonderful. If you don't, if you don't, you can easily get that online. Go to Cafe Astrology, go to astro.com, go to my site, HeidiRose.com, and you can order a snapshot that talks about your sun, moon, and rising. You can, you know, you can work with a workbook about your sun, moon, and rising. So, you know, there's plenty of ways to learn about your sun, moon, and rising. And you want to know that. And you need to know your exact time of birth, by the way, um, and the place and the date which you were born. Exact time of birth is very, very important. Okay. So... Let's get into just a little bit of the juicy, uh, the juicy part of each astrological sign so that you all get a little taste of your bounty and your goodness. And what I want to do just for the next, you know, few minutes, 10 minutes or so, is to dive into each sign and offer you the unique creative strength of each sign. And as we talk about the unique creative strength, we're also sort of feeling into how each sign enters this creative zone, like how each sign gets into the creative zone or the gifts of creativity that they can offer or how they offer those gifts. I mean, every sign is creative. We don't just relegate that to Leo, right? Every sign is creative, but how are they creative? What are their gifts? And what? Can, how can you sometimes jumpstart so you feel like you're um, diving into the creative zone and creative realm? So let's go ahead and just dive in. So Aries is a fire sign and its great gift is vitality and initiative and boldness and daring. And by the way, I'm going to show you, you might, you might want to take notes, but you might also at the end, I'll show you just a little for, uh, form with this on it so you can work with these words. But you know, Aries brings the new, Aries brings youthfulness, it brings springtime, it brings the the energy of the first. It's like a little crocus bursting up through concrete. It's like all things are new in Aries. It's the zodiac new year, right? So Aries has the bold idea. Aries loves the new idea and there's nothing like an idea for an Aries. And the minute they have the idea, they want to act on it. And if you're feeling sad or, you know, heavy as an Aries, you just need to start sitting down and going like, what could I make? What could I, I mean, it's like, it, it wants to, it wants like a match wants to be lit. You could do this, you could do this, you could do this. Also, Aries really needs to move. It needs to like punch or, you know, move its body so that the mind starts going, do you know? And, and, and um, Mars, Mars rules Aries, which is this warrior planet. And Mercury rules Aries, which is the idea planet. 
So for an Aries, their favorite place is, I have an idea, I have an idea, and they do not want to wait to make it happen. <laughs> Some of the other signs of the zodiac sometimes will calm them down and say, let's do this with patience and let's do this with excellence. But there's something to be said for jumping off the cliff. There's something to be said for just going like, we're going to do it. And that's kind of how it felt when I started to work with Lindsay on these books. It's like, we're in, boom, I'll have you, all this ready for you in you know, a couple of months, boom. It's just you dive in and you don't wait for perfection. That's the big thing with Aries is your creativity will enlighten, will, will inflame if you don't wait for it to be just perfect, perfect, perfect. So it's this bold, vital, initiating energy. Now, if Aries is like that, Taurus is magnetic. Every sign is an antidote for the sign before. So Taurus is magnetic and it's quiet and it draws to itself that which it needs. It's ruled by Venus, the most beautiful sign. If you wanna get inspired as a Taurus, go walk out in nature and breathe. I just wrote this morning on Instagram, you know, about forest bathing, right? Go into nature and breathe. And also as a Taurus, show up in a kind of rhythmic offering, show up again and again and again. And, uh, and Tauruses know how to appreciate the beautiful. They know how to appreciate everything. They're, they're like, mm, this is my favorite hamburger that I've ever eaten. Oh, that's the most beautiful sunset. Like they, their tool of appreciation is beautiful. And so when you appreciate something, you grow it. And so a Taurus like grows the beauty through appreciating it. It's also really tangible and it wants to, you know, it wants to make sure it comes to form, but do not push a Taurus, right? If you need to get inspired as a Taurus, Taurus rules all the senses. Wake up any sense, sit and look at the sunset, smell the bread baking in the oven and just let it fill you. And also do this exercise as a Taurus. Anytime you look out into the world, See if you can see light. Even if you're looking at a pile of garbage, <laughs> do you know what I mean? See if you can see the light inherent in all things because Taurus has a capacity to see the light and it's very intuitive. So Tauruses also have to trust their intuition, okay? So Taurus is an embodied, Taurus needs to like uh, sculpture, get its hands on something, make things, make it real. All right. Gemini is again an antidote, right? So if Taurus slows things down, Gemini is quick and bright and it ignites creativity through curiosity. A, a Gemini has to ask a thousand questions. It has to collect the facts. It has to, sometimes a Gemini has to do two things at once. So it's like, I'm making this collage and I'm writing this essay. I'm cooking dinner and I'm, uh, you know, designing a dress, whatever it is, right? Sometimes it just has to go between things and it does not do well by just being like, okay, I have to write this book. So if you're, if you have strong Gemini, allow yourself to have a couple of pots on the stove. Don't have 10, have two. <laughs> and a Gemini also has to say to spark its creativity. What am I a messenger for? What, what do I want to speak for? Just like in uh, the Lorax, you know, Dr. Seuss is the Lorax. He says, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. What do you want to speak for? That gets you going. And who do you want to talk to? And what do you want to ask? Geminis are full of, of questions and curiosity and they have a young energy. Aries and Gemini have this youthfulness to them that they can lend to their creativity. It's beautiful. And Gemini, like I said, is ruled by Mercury and Mercury is the winged messenger going here and there. Okay, Cancer is again, the antidote, right? If Gemini is out there, Cancer comes home. So it comes home to the hearth. It comes home to be nourished. It comes home with feeling sensitivity. You know how a Cancer um, walks sideways too? And I mean, the crab walks sideways and it approaches something and it has the little antenna. It's like, is it safe here? Do I feel safe here? Can I create here? So for a cancer to create, it has to feel safe and it has to feel like it can wrap its arms around something and take care of it. It has to feel like this is my project. I'm producing this. This is my company. I'm taking care of everything about this. It's almost like a mama bear with how it wants to care for and nourish 
whatever it is it wants to create. And I always say that a cancer grows spherically. It, it doesn't grow linearly. It starts out by saying, this is my little thing. Oh, now this is, oh, now come on in. This is my thing. Oh, now this is my thing. And it includes and it includes and it includes until it grows its empire. So a cancer needs to know that it needs solitude and it needs its home and it needs its home base. But from there, it can take care of a whole world. Yeah. Leo is the creativity that comes through authenticity and courage. And just like Lindsay was talking about, this whole book fair is about how do we come forward with our authentic selves and give our gifts and write our books, right? And so it's all about selfhood and it's about the heart. Leo rules the heart and the sun is connected to Leo. So it's like a sun at the center of your chest blazing forth. And what are you here? To, how are you here to shine? What medium are you here to shine through? And a Leo always just has to keep asking itself, well, who am I anyway? Who am I now? And what do I want to express? So here I am with Leo rising. And I, in 2013, I said, I'm a poet and that's not fully expressed yet. So how can I express that, right? So I wanted to give myself um, a way to express that energy. A Leo, we say never compromise the true radiant self. Leo, never compromise. So you, you, a Leo has to feel her heart engaged. And if she doesn't feel her heart engaged, she won't want to authentically lead. And so creativity with her Leo is about leadership and the heart. Virgo, again, a more divine feminine energy that goes inward. And this is a creativity that comes with refinement and specificity and devotion and the desire to make something better, to be of service. It's, it's tremendously uh, humble and it, it wants to refine and improve. I've talked to thousands of people in this practice and every editor that I've ever spoken to has strong Virgo, right? Whether they're editing music or editing films or editing books, they're refining and improving and packaging and they're making it beautiful. And a Virgo pays attention to the material world so that love and grace and beauty can pour through. Yeah. Um, don't forget, like if you, even if you don't have, let's say Virgo in your chart, you might have what's called a, a loaded sixth house, which is the area of the chart that's ruled by Virgo. So you might have six planets in the sixth house, which makes you very Virgo. So I'm just planting that seed. Um, but Virgo is creative through its refining eye and it's creative through its devotion. It really wants to practice something. It wants to practice yoga. It wants to practice the tarot, you know, it really wants to practice. Libra is the sign of design and balance and beauty and uh, desire to collaborate. That's the most important thing for the creativity factor with the Libra is that it loves to collaborate. It wants its partner. Do you know, it wants, who, can we do this together? Can we make this together? It's more pleasurable and fun together, always inviting the other in and always creating beautiful conversation and peace and trying to bring balance to any room. They're the ultimate hosts and hostesses. And they're, they're creative through, like if they throw a dinner party, they're like, oh my gosh, Lindsay has to talk to Alex or, you know, Heidi has to talk to Ellen, whatever it is, you know, like they, they figure out who needs to talk to one another. And that is a gift of creativity. Scorpio is creativity through depth, through tenacity, through intensity, through research, you do not give a Scorpio a superficial project and do not give a Scorpio a kind of, um, what would I say, like light project. Like they want the taboo, they want the intense, they want to get to the heart of the matter, they want to solve the mystery, they want to get, they want to be fiercely committed to it, they want to never give up. And so, you know, Scorpio understands what part of its creativity is knowing how power works and knowing how to strategize and knowing how to bring depth to any situation. And sometimes they'll observe, 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 observe. Like if there was like a brainstorming group, they might not say anything at first and they might check out the room and they might check out the psychology and who's there. And then they come forward with power. <laughs> so Scorpio, uh, its creativity has everything to do with the underworld and the, 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 shining a flashlight into the, the psyche and um, 
Also, I'll just say Scorpios have a particular creative power with money. They know how to work resourcefully. They know how to invest. They have a, a superpower with money. Sagittarius brings in creativity through exploration and enthusiasm. And it says, let's go here together. I want to inspire you. I want to show you new worlds, either externally or internally. I want to educate you. I want to uplift you. I want to mentor you. So there's tremendous enthusiasm with Sagittarius and there's tremendous goal setting. So um, by the way, publishing is ruled by Sagittarius. Interesting, because it has a lot to do with storytelling. So Sagittarius says, I see the goal, I reach the goal, and then I see another. It gets on its horse and rides. It, it, it's got such positivity about the future and it, it um, never gives up. It's resilient. So its creativity has so much to do with seeking out and offering inspiration. Capricorn is creativity with a plan, a plan and commitment and discipline and hard work and climbing but i will say this i always say this for sweet capricorns they get younger as they get older so they lighten up and they don't feel their burden or their responsibility quite as heavily but they can they can be creative through their leadership and through their authority and they um they climb steadily and they have a great sense of right timing they're really good with timing and knowing when to act and um they put the boss hat on their own head, okay? Good, we're on a whirlwind. We're on a whirlwind tour of the Zodiac here. Um, Aquarius brings creativity through improvisation, through allyship, right? Through uh, innovation, through anything that's cutting edge. Its creativity is like, I'm going off road. I'm gonna take a different way. And hey, do you wanna come with me? Because I'd rather do it with friends. So Aquarius always thrives in a group situation. I live in Los Angeles. I'm constantly doing charts for people um, that are in improv classes and improv troops, and they're all Aquarius because it's this group electricity. Aquarius is electric. It's sudden. It's a bolt out of the blue. It's, I'm inspired, do you know? So there's tremendous desire to work together and a tremendous desire to forge out the new territory. We are entering the age of Aquarius and in the age of Aquarius, we have to elevate one another. We have to lift one another. We have to do it together. It's not a solo show. It is not a solo show. Okay. Finally, Pisces. So Pisces is a great sign where creativity comes through the imagination. It comes through the, ima the imagination, through compassion, through love, through wanting to help and uplift and redeem and care for people. It, it, it really wants to, it feels things so deeply and it wants to help. It wants to help. And, but it also has a big, big oceanic imagination. So Pisces rules film, it rules music, it rules poetry, you know, it rules photography, all these kind of ephemeral, beautiful arts that, that take us somewhere right? This is Pisces. And so anytime somebody has Pisces rising, it's like they're clearly here if they're conscious and loving. They're here to just hold and uplift and encourage with an ocean of love. Yeah. So, so my friends, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to bring up a little sheet and it's not the most beautiful workshop worksheet in the world, but it'll, it'll do. Oh, hey, Lindsay, could you um, perhaps make it possible for me to share the screen? Um, and if not, that's okay too, because I'll just give you the, um, I'll give you the phrase, but I want you to just write a little phrase for yourself. Um, and it's going to be based just on your sun and your rising sign. Um, I'm trying one sec. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah. It's something. It, it, I think I need to make you a host. Um, but then just, you may need to make me back a host. I'm not sure. Or you make, just make me a co-host. It doesn't allow me for some reason. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. It'll just help for um, everyone to maybe have the words uh, in, uh oh, I'm the host now. I might just take over everything. Okay. So I just want to share this with you quickly. Um, so here's what I want you to do just for the next five, uh, two, two minutes. Like this is in true Alexander Franzen form. You know, I'm going to give you two minutes to write a poem or two minutes to fill this out. So here are some words that I used, okay? And I want you to. 
use this phrase, I come forth with, and then you use the, the words of your sun sign to offer my gift of, and use the words of your rising sign. Now, if you don't know your rising sign, just do a two minute quick, you know, list of what you come forth with in terms of your sun sign. But you can obviously use these words or any words that inspired you as I was speaking to, um, to flesh this out. And it's just, it's a, a bare bones thing that's gonna give you a chance to uh, have a new mission, you know, a new mission statement or understand where your creative com creativity comes from and understand what you can give creatively. So I'm gonna be quiet just for like a minute or so, a minute or two, and just write this out. And then I'm gonna ask if, we, if you feel up to it that a few of you share in the chat, you can even write it right into the chat if you want to, okay? So play with that for, I'm going to wait for two minutes and then we're going to, we're going to, if you want to start writing in the chat, you can already. And then I'll make Lindsay the host again and um, we'll, we'll share some of them and read them out loud. can use as many words as you want. I come forward with feisty, daring, initiative, and bold will. <laughs> Hmm, I love the ones coming in. We're gonna read them out loud. All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the share here, and I'm going to just so that I can. Okay, I'm, I'm making Lindsay the host again. Okay, so let's read some of these out loud, okay? So these are so beautiful. And um, let's start this. I, um, I think, did Tony change hers later? Uh, okay, let's read these out loud. I come forth. I come forth with inspirational enthusiasm. Okay, a true Sagittarius. I come forth with intensity and research to offer my gift of depth. There you go. So many scientists or um, re like um, investigative journalists are Scorpio. They just go deep. I come forth with intensity and research to offer my gift of depth. That's powerful. I come forth with nourishment, cancer, to offer my gift of connecting, Libra or Gemini. I come forth with boldness to offer my gift of inspiration. You can feel the double fire there, right? Those are Aries, Leo, and uh, Sagittarius all fire. Uh, I come forth with my love of inspiration and exploration to offer my gift of specificity and desire to serve. That's Sagittarius and Virgo. That's beautiful, Diana. Um, and Sagittarius and Virgo do really well together because Virgo gives the uh, Sagittarius gives the big picture, and Virgo is the specific path along the way. Um, okay, let's read the new version here. I come forth with intensity, sensuality, and research to offer my gift of depth. Beautiful. 
Rose, I come forward with tenacity, Scorpio, to offer my gift of depth and creativity. Intimacy is what I'm wrestling with. And always, yes, we're wrestling with something in the sign. It's never purely easy. We're always trying to grow something because Scorpio can sometimes keep things very private or hold things back and it, and it needs to keep moving the energy through. Melanie, I come forth with authenticity and self-expression to offer my gifts of beauty and social justice. Gorgeous. Libra's so much to do with social justice. I probably didn't say enough about that, but they're really willing to stand up for what is fair and just and right. Tessa, I come forth with a desire to serve and improve, to offer my gift of the editorial eye. Virgo, Virgo, gorgeous. We need our Virgos. They help us refine everything. Carrie, I come forth with feeling sensitivity to offer my gift of light. Gorgeous. Cancer, perhaps Taurus or Leo, beautiful. Deirdre, I come forth with light to offer my gift of inspiration. Beautiful. Um, and Diana, I'll come back to that question in a second. And then I come forth with authenticity to offer my gift of self-expression. Didn't like the Leo words for rising, but I'm Leo, sun, and rising. Okay, so let me give you some more words for Leo, okay? Leo, um, the sun, radiance, uh, courage, confidence, authentic leadership, um, and of course, you know, it's so perfect that also it didn't fit you quite. That's Leo. It's like, but that's, but I'm not that, I'm this. So every Leo has to find their way of saying who they uniquely are, their unique offering, right? Their authentic offering. Yeah, beautiful. And then Diana, you're saying, I, I, I struggle with the rising sign Virgo words and I more relate to Sagittarius and have a stellium and Sag. Yeah, and so Virgo, Virgo is also, you know, sometimes some of the more um, signs that are, quieter or more of service are of course not as flashy as the like ah, I inspire I you know offer the gift of of education whatever it is you know I travel Virgo is a quieter power it's devotional it, it it's a priestess she shows up and she quietly makes everything better she sees what needs to be fixed and she goes about fixing it without a lot of to do <laughs> So, so I mean, and, and this is why the love letters are so important because even if I kind of didn't capture in every word, you know, didn't have the whole list of best words for the rising sign or for the signs, they're all in here, right? So um, Adrian says, I come forward with my desire to serve and improve, to offer my gifts of compassion and ability to synthesize. Beautiful. Keep playing with this. There's a lot more. Um, in the books and on my website as well. So I know, gosh, time flies. So we have just a few more minutes. I would be happy to answer any questions. And if there are not questions, um, I would also just say go, you know, go to the website and there's so many things that you can play with there. There are workbooks and these books and go to Lindsay's One Idea Press and all of that. Um, but if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. And Lindsay, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> Um, I'm typing your website in here. Also, I wanted to mention, um, I put this in the chat. I don't know if you saw it, but our uh, Virgo book had a typo in it and another Virgo let us know. <laughs> It was so great. It was like, it was, it, and my mom is a moon in Virgo and she copy edited for me, like before I even sent it to Lindsay to copy edit. And she's, she found all the little things and she's like, I love doing this. <laughs> and it's perfect for moon and Virgo. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is super fun. Can you talk a bit about how you would offer working with a, pers a person around one's moon sign? My moon is in Capricorn. Yeah, so the moon, um, you have to look at the tricky parts of the, the sign when you're looking at a moon sign. You have to say, oh, okay, Capricorn tends to take everything on and be hyper responsible and tends to really... Um, sometimes be a little stoic so if you ask a capricorn moon you know how are you they might say i'm just fine i'm fine and i will take care of myself and i will take care of you and i don't need to take you know you don't need to take care of me you, because it, it's kind of like the parentified child it grows up really quickly often and takes on responsibility really early so you have to find the wound in the moon so that you can soothe it with the antidote which is often the sign opposite it so every capricorn moon needs to feel like her little child self and needs to have it be okay to be messy and needs to have it be okay to 
feel like you're not, you don't have to be in charge every moment. You can, you can stop, you know? So uh, we have to look at the, the trickier parts of the, of the moon and soothe them and help them evolve and grow. So it doesn't stunt us or hold us back. Because if we never ask for help as a Capricorn moon, guess what? That's no fun and you can't do anything. You can't do everything alone. You can't just control the world, you know? So, so yeah, that's, I would work with each sign in that way. And I have, um, before we wrap up here, two, two questions that I saw come through. Um, one is, my brother's a Leo, and I'd love to give the book to him, but I feel like this is a series for women only, or is that a wrong impression? No, nope, no, it's totally not for women only. I just tend to work with women, so I'm always like using she or they, but um, no, it's absolutely for men as well, and I've had many, many men buy it and, and um, love it, so yes. And then also, where can uh, folks check out, like figure out their moon and rising if they don't know? Go on, so three choices, like Cafe Astrology is great, astro.com is great. You can, you'll be given your, your chart and placements. There's all kinds of apps where you can be given your chart and placements, or you can just go to HeidiRose.com and you can um, order, you can buy the chart your, course class which is $18 or it's just a workbook and that gives you every placement or a, or a snapshot that we my little team does about your sun moon and rising and that as well will give you every placement and so you start to get to work with this map that's a beautiful map of the heavens the moment you were born I love it um Thank you. Just found my brother's Christmas gift. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Yeah, we had so much fun bringing these out around Christmas. I mean, it was a lot to bring out 12 books, but, you know, everybody wanted to give them as, as you know, holiday gifts. So that was so wonderful and exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so fun. I'm going to remove you now um, from the spotlight. There we go. Um, any other last, let me just see if there's any last little questions here. Um, Thank you, Heidi. People are saying thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's give it up for Heidi, um, who you're just so amazing. And I love, I didn't even know, I actually didn't know that that's how you met Alex. Like you were introduced to her and um, and so that's really cool. And I just, that it feels like so full circle, you know, now Alex and I with what we do and you coming along and so that was really fun to hear. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. And I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you for everyone out there. <laughs> Yay, awesome. Well, thanks again, Heidi. Um, everyone, you can check out Heidi's website. I put it in the chat. Um, and again, this will be recorded. So if you're just tuning in and you missed some of this, um, there was some good stuff. Also, I do recommend uh, if you wrote down your I come forth with to offer my gift of I do uh, suggest, you know, journaling on that later. I think that's like a really great, um, you know, creative exercise to kind of fully grasp those things and to kind of just play around with, you know, the true intention of who you are. I find that that's really, really helpful.